Welcome. I want to thank you for viewing Truth in Christ broadcast. This program was designed with you in mind to inform, edify, strengthen, and build you up in the word of the Lord. So join me as we examine God's word. Today's lesson is taken from the book of Exodus. The chapter is 5 and the verse is 2. Exodus chapter 5 and verse 2. In this verse, we've, we have the question where Pharaoh says, Who is the Lord that I should obey him, I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. A very interesting question. A very important question. Who is the Lord? And I believe that the rest of events that took place is God's attempt to answer that question to Pharaoh. But I, my approach would be a little different. I would like to answer that question from the word of God by narrowing down the answer or limiting the answer to three points from the text. And these three points are, he is the God of the Hebrews, he is almighty God, and he is a God that delivers. We want to examine the scriptures. And, and develop all right, what is said by the scriptures. So we have in verse 3 of chapter 5. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Pharaoh asks the question, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord Jehovah? They said, the God of the Hebrews. And for those who don't know, who are not familiar with the scriptures, one may ask the question, what is meant by the God of the Hebrews. Well, the father of the Hebrew nation is Abraham. The word Hebrew was ascribed to Abraham by the foreigners. And it is used by the foreigners to distinguish this group of people, the Hebrews, from the other nations or the other races that was dwelling in the land. Abraham and his descendants would refer to themselves as Israelites. But the other people and the other nations and races will refer to them as Hebrews. So he is the God of the Hebrew that's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. These are the fathers of the nation of Hebrew, of the Hebrews. And what it is telling us is that God had a relationship with these men. He was their God and they belonged to him. They were his people. All right. Eventually, they became a nation. The Hebrew, the Israelites became a nation. And that nation was selected and chosen by God to be his people. He is the God of the Hebrews. God made, God established his covenant, his promises with these men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. God made a covenant. God made promises. God said that Abraham was going to be blessed. And that he was going to bless those who blessed him and curse those who curse him. God said Abraham was going to become a great nation. He said he was going to give the land that Abraham sojourned on to his descendants. And because God made these promises and established his covenant, we are going to see the working of God. We are going to see God keeping his promise and by so doing, proving to them that he is God, that he is the I am, the all present God. Now Abraham became a father not only of a physical nation, the Jews, but he became a father of the faithful, spiritual nation, those who believe in God. Faithful Father Abraham. And so it's, it's important that even today, you may not be asking the question, but you still need the answer. You still need to know who is the Lord? Who is Lord God Jehovah? And you need to know why. You need to know who he is. So, he established his covenants. And we see from Genesis 13 through 17, where he confirmed these promises that he had made with Abraham's descendants, his sons. In the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9, we read where Paul is talking about the privilege that the Israelites have. And beginning from verse 3, Paul said, I wish I could, he said, I, he said, for I could wish, and I'm reading from the NIV, mm -hmm. for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off for, from Christ for the sake of the Israelites, my brethren, those of my own race, the people of Israel, theirs is the adoption as sons, theirs the divine glory, the covenant, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Here are some some things that Paul make mention of, some benefits, some privileges that the Israelite had, if this is fleshly Israel, had as the people of God. God made certain promises to fleshly Israel. He had a relationship with fleshly Israel. And it's important that we, we make a distinction between the Israel of the flesh, those that came out of Abraham, and Israel of the spirit. Those who believe in Christ 
those who are exercising their faith, just as Abraham exercised his faith in God, he trusted God. Those who are trusting in Christ are said to be sons of Abraham, sons and daughters of Abraham. So here we have a list of privileges that the Israelite had. They became God's peculiar people, his special people, his chosen people. And as that special group of people, they were given lords to guide them. They were given, or I would say promises, God made promises to them that he was going to fulfill blessings. All right. He was there for them and he was their God. And so the first thing, according to the question that was asked by Pharaoh, who is the Lord? In response, they said, the God of the Hebrews met with us. And who the God of the Hebrew is? He is the Lord God, Jehovah. When Moses was called, and he said, what if they, they would have asked him, what is your name? Say to them, the I am that I am have sent me. This is the God that Pharaoh needs to come and learn about. Needs to come into a relationship with. He said, I don't know him. I'm not going to listen to him. I'm not going to let Israel go. Not only is he the God of the Hebrews, but secondly, he is Lord God Almighty. And it's important that we understand and we know that Jehovah God is Almighty God. In chapter 6 and verse 3, the scripture says, ex Exodus, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. He revealed himself to the patriarchs as God Almighty. Well, this, this means Almighty is talking about all-powerful. He is an all-powerful God. He's a God that can do anything. There is nothing that is impossible for him not to do. And as we stop and meditate and think about God Almighty, the question must arise. How did he arrive? How did he come to get this name, this title? But I'm thinking about in the boxing fraternity, the heavyweight champion, the undisputed, is one who goes up against others and come out victorious continually, undefeated. And we hear that so many times when we are viewing some heavyweight boxing match. When I think about that, and I read this verse that he is almighty God. I'm thinking that he had to come up against 
some other gods to prove himself not to himself but to others to you and me and to those who have gone on before us because Pharaoh is saying to himself but we have gods we have many gods in Egypt why should I listen to a foreign god to another god not knowing that he is the god of gods that's what almighty god means he's all powerful and so god is going to jehovah god is going to have to reveal himself unto pharaoh and let pharaoh know help him to learn and to know that he is god almighty we have the ten plagues it's referred to as the ten correspondent courses where god is going to demonstrate his power gradually to pharaoh and he said you know through this Pharaoh is going to know that I am Lord God. But not only Pharaoh is going to know, but Israel is going to know. Because this is a new generation. The old generation passed away. And a new generation came up. Who hadn't had dealings with God like the, those who had gone before. The nation who came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea experienced God's might, his power, his wonder, his greatness. They saw what God did to the Egyptians. They would have told it to their children and their children, children. Somewhere along the line, some of that message might have been lost. This new generation had to learn for themselves who God was. And so God turned the water of the Nile River and all of the waters in the land of Egypt into blood. God showed that he had the power to command the creatures upon the earth to obey his beckon, his call. The frogs, the lice, the flies. God commanded them and they obeyed. God showed that he had the power in some places to inflict diseases on the body of mankind, like boils. God showed that he had the power to call hail from the sky. And the locusts he commanded to come forth. God had powers to bring about darkness upon the land. Thick darkness. We're talking about the all the all powerful God. And God is is demonstrating and revealing himself to Pharaoh and to this new generation of people. We read about when they left Egypt and they came to the Red Sea, <coughs> there was again doubt in their minds. But God was able to part the Red Sea, so that his people could walk on dry land. 
I want you to think about the kind of power that it takes to part the sea to the point that the land where they were walking on, it was not muddy, it was dry. That's the God that we are talking about. He is a God, if I can go further into the book of Daniel, and I will, I, will, I will come to that in a short while. He is a God where nothing is impossible for him to do. He is all powerful. He can raise the dead. He can call something or nothing out of, to come out from the air. He is creator. He is sustainer. He is provider. This is who God is. And so we read about God's outstretched arm. You know, we recently we did a research on the mighty arm and the outstretched hand of God. And I can say that I have a better appreciation now, having understand. the meaning and the use. God said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 15 to the children of Israel, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and I brought you out with a mighty arm and with an outstretched hand. And this is talking about the power of God. God, all that we just talked about here, the plagues, are used in reference to the mighty power of God. The outstretched arm is how he performed his acts of wonder. He told Moses to stretch forth his hand with the rod that was in his hands. And whatever God said to Moses was going to come to pass. If God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the Nile River and it's going to be turned to blood, that was what's going to happen. If he said to stretch out your hands and the sky is going to become black that is what is going to happen so we, we find here the scriptures that shows that God is almighty all powerful and I want to close off by saying that he is a God that delivers He is a God that delivers. Before I go into that, to develop that point, I just want to make mention of the, the rain that came upon us recently and caused a flood, it caused a devastation, caused problems. What we as a people must recognize is the goodness of God and the mercy of God. Because what I saw in all of this is God's mercy and God's goodness. I mean, God was good to us. He didn't send us a storm. He didn't send us wind. He didn't send us, he just sent us triples of rain. Rainfall over a period of time. 
And if you stop and you think about it, you will see how good God is. But he's a God that delivers. And so he promised the Israelites that he was going to deliver them out of slavery, out of bondage. And he knew that Pharaoh and the Israelites was going to be stubborn. And so when he delivered his final wonder, that was the death of the firstborn, Pharaoh and all of Egypt was going to humble before him. They were going to bow before him. They, along with the king, was ready to chase the, Is the Israelites out of Egypt. That's how God delivered. But he, he, he is delivering them and he said in chapter 13, chapter 12, sorry, from verse 31, that acts of the, Is the Egyptians for, for clothing and for, for jewelries and for, for things, and they will give you because they have, they have found favor. You have found favor in their sight. When it, we're talking about deliverance, we're talking about Daniel. Both the account that tells us about him being in the lion's den, where the lions didn't touch Daniel. He was thrown in the lion's den, and he was able to come out alive. Because the king asked, was your God able to deliver you? And he said, yes. The three Hebrew boys that was cast into the fire also came out of the fire without any smell of, of, of smoke or fire, without any scratch. And that shows you how God can deliver. As I bring this lesson to a close, the question is who is the Lord? And Jehovah God, in the scriptures and the texts, went about to answer that to Pharaoh. But also, we have the references today, it's an answer to us. That he is the God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is God Almighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. And he is a God that delivers. All of us need deliverance. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Put your faith and your trust in Almighty God. And in his son Jesus. And he will deliver you. Until the next time, I trust that this lesson would have been a blessing. Continue watching, continue learning. And continue trusting in Jesus. Amen. Thank you.